Welcome to What the Flick, everybody. I'm Matt Atchity, that's Ben Mankiewicz. Uh, we are here to do another uh, tribute. Talked about George Romero, now we're talking about the great Martin Landau, who we lost this past weekend. Yeah, uh, Landau, a really, really interesting actor. You know, and, and had a great late career uh, renaissance uh, with Ed Wood, Crimes and Misdemeanors, and Tucker. Um, uh, just a, and, and an incredibly interesting guy too. I, I interviewed him long form. I spent really a couple hours with him, uh, counting before and after. And we were going to go to dinner, and I'm of course shamed that you know that process started, but then didn't follow up with his daughter um, back. So this was in April, and he was great. You know, he was lively, kept the audience engaged. So funny, so charming, so smart. Um, a uh, couple of great Martin Landau stories. He took uh, classes there at the Actors Studio with uh, 2,000 people, right, auditioning. And, uh, and Strasburg uh, picks two, wow. two of 2,000. Uh, uh, and it's uh, James Dean and Martin Landau. Wow. Like those are the guys who went through. Hmm. Uh, and so you're reminded to some of these people who made it, they made it for a reason. You know, Strasburg said of all the students that he ever taught in his life, two stood above the others. And those two were Marlon Brando and Marilyn Monroe. So again, it's a way to, you like, whatever you think about Marilyn Monroe, you, right. you're thinking incorrectly. I mean, and then Monroe is related to Landau. The conversation that I had in April with, with, uh, with Martin Landau went so well that in this 45 minute conversation, you know, he dated Marilyn. Like he went out with her on three or four dates and he told a great story, he told me upstairs in the in the green room before the thing started. He was like, yeah, it was just beautiful and she was interesting. and But she wouldn't come down. Like she kept yeah. changing, she kept changing. I mean, that insecurity that we saw on set right. was manifesting itself in that way. And he was like, I just I couldn't handle it. You know, went out three or four times and had to, had to, had to move on. Um, so their conversation went so well that I forgot to ask him about Marilyn Monroe. That's a sign that the conversation is going well. Um, uh, but uh, you know, then uh, re recognizing him in these brilliant roles late in his career, uh, I just uh, you know those those were three really impressive movies that gave him great range. Yeah, he's one of those guys that you know you see him in his early work where he's getting these bit parts and he's like thug number one, right? Or he's got the He's got the thug role in North by Northwest that doesn't really give him a lot to do, and he still kind of makes, mm -hmm. he still manages to make a splash in that role, right? But he's one of those guys that he has to kind of, the way I think about it is the way Ron Perlman writes in his memoir. He had to, Perlman writes about how he had to grow into his face. Yeah. He had to be, get old enough to get the kind of parts that the way he looked was gonna get him parts. And I think there's some of that going on with Landau and that he's always a really talented actor. But his look was too hard for, I think, Hollywood at the time to really understand what to do with. And as he gets older and can play these yeah. older roles, then that's where he really has the opportunity to shine. You know, is his great role in Tucker, um, you know, great role in Ed Wood, as you said. Uh, I mean, and that's Crimes and Misdemeanors. And Crimes and Misdemeanors. Um, all great films, you know, and does he do interesting stuff in the 60s, like trying to break into TV like a lot of people? Yeah, you see him in, you know, we get him in uh, Space 1999, we get him in Mission Impossible. I mean, he was he left for contracts in Mission Impossible. He was great in Mission yeah. Impossible. I mean, again, yeah. man of a thousand faces, you right. know. Um, right, could really play anything. Right. Um, he was, yeah, he's so versatile in that great moment of, although it turns out a little bit is in the script for North by Northwest, but he told the story about how he decided to make his character, the henchman to James Mason in North by Northwest, gay, um, prompting people to ask Mason forever, were you bisexual, were you? And, and, and Landau would, and, and Mason would be like, hey man, Landau just did that, okay? <laughs> right, like Landau, Landau didn't check ask, with me. Ask Landau. But somebody sent me the script. I want to you North to do that the way James Mason would say it. <laughs> like, Lando you know, just Lando. did that. Yeah. Um, the uh, uh, somebody sent me the script to North by Northwest, and and it it, it turns out not to contradict Lando because I'm sure he made some interesting choices, but but it's in the stage direction, you know. Oh, yeah. And there are a couple of lines there that are so I don't know whether that became the stage direction, Lando, and so, but anyway, he he 
sort of embraced maybe that Mason character. Maybe Mason wrote a different script. That character, the fact that that, maybe they gave Mason a different script, that that character was in love with, uh, uh, with James Mason. Um, so, uh, uh, but, but Tucker, it, it, uh, the Coppola movie, uh, uh, I mean, he, I think he was just particularly fantastic. Um, uh, uh, what was his character's name there? Yeah, Abe. So, uh, uh, I don't know, Tuck, it just, you know, it could have been such a small part, could have been nothing, and, it, and, and then you sort of, you, you end up aching for him. I mean, he is the sort of emotional center of that movie. Uh, a really underrated movie. Uh, he got an Oscar nominated for that for Best Supporting Actor. He was 60 at the time. Uh, and that led to crimes and misdemeanors. And, and I love crimes and misdemeanors yeah. because you know, for a long time, you look at somebody like Landau and you look at somebody like Jerry Orbach and you keep thinking, oh man, I'm getting those guys mixed up all the time. Right. And then they get cast as relatives and you see them side by side. And, and I thought, man, they don't look anything alike. <laughs> no, they don't. Right? But, but they do look like they could be brothers. They, they don't look anything alike, but they have the, I mean, they're, they have the same right, cheeks. Right, yeah. that kind of long yeah. face yeah. and yeah. Uh, and just those scenes of the agony of, of, of Judah at, well, at Landau trying to get Orbach to do it or trying to figure, trying to ask without asking. Right. Right. And then the horror of when the thing he asked for actually happens. Yeah. Um, and that this is inside and, a Woody Allen movie. Right. Just, and his great line where he tells Woody Allen that he watches too many movies. Yeah, that's right. right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, he also, I, I read, uh, he got the whole script for Crimes and Misdemeanors. Like the way Woody Allen does not give the whole script, he huh. just gives, but he gave he gave Martin Landau the whole script, uh, and then the signature role in 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 Tim Burton's Ed Wood, uh, uh, just again to have an actor at that stage of his career, and you met, you know, and you see it now happening with more and more older actors, but. Uh, you know, I mean, he learned the Hungarian accent, and then he learned how to have a Hungarian accent and try to hide having a right. Hungarian accent. I mean, it's really, it, it, it's uh, uh, it's perfect. Right, I mean, that's like Olivier talking about playing Richard III, like, oh, I'll put a rock in my shoe and then try not to limp. Right, that's right. right. I mean, yeah. that's the same thing, right? And it's this great, mm -hmm. subtle moment um, that you don't see out of a lot of actors, right? I mean, it's... The best example I think you can see recently is if for those, like if you're not watching Orphan Black, like watch Tatiana Maslany as these eight, 15, 30,000 <laughs> clone characters, watch her be one of the primary characters trying to be the other character. Right, right, right. right. And not quite getting it right. And right. it's this great study in style. And yeah, we, you know, that's Landau did that in. Uh, in Ed Wood, and it's terrific. A great actor, and Gray Drake from Rotten Tomatoes, I sent her to go interview him a couple of times, and she just was just completely enamored with him. Yeah, and it's hard. come back having all these great stories. Yeah, it's really hard not to be. He was, yeah. uh, he was filled with uh, kindness and decency. He loved acting, never would have dreamed of retiring. It was too interesting. Too, he's got a movie opening this year. Um, uh, which he was proud of and talked about. I think it's like at the tri gonna be at the Tribeca Film Festival. Right. And uh, uh, so one last chance to see right. him. One last chance to see him. But uh, and and, the, and again, from you know, he turned down Spock. Yeah, turned down the role of Spock on Star Trek. Right. Um, which you can't say was a bad move. No, and it, but which he would say, yeah, I, it would have been great. Well, first of all, of course, he goes, look, uh, who look, the other guy crushed Leonard it. Nemo, yeah. Right. You know, he'd go. He said he, he he crushed it. But yeah, he got offered that. But he didn't want to be tied down. It's why he left uh, Mission right. Impossible in the middle of a successful run because they weren't paying him. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. I, he was just a, a principled guy, a good guy, a really good actor. Um, uh, and and of course, in his, and, and was married for a long time to Barbara Bain, and uh, uh, who was his co-star in Space 1999. All right. All right, uh, Martin Landau. That was a tough one to lose.